Hey, if you can spare a few minutes, I'd love to go back to my story about Fiverr, NAVA, the National Association of Voice Actors, and Karen Guilfrey, the Vice President of NAVA. I promise not to repeat anything I said yesterday or the day before, but I do want to respond to the podcast Karen recorded with Jamie Muffet. It's called The Breakfast Show. I love it. If you're interested in voiceovers and in the topic of Fiverr, do what I did today and listen to that last episode. It's a really good conversation that covered a lot of ground. 90% of the podcast was about the issues and only 10% about Karen and me, but I do want to start there. Karen said that my video had made her sad and that she was hurt because she thought we had a better relationship than that. I could have reached out to her personally, she said, before posting something publicly. She said, I hate having conflicts with people. It eats my soul. It makes me feel terrible. The fact that he chose to not only publicly call me out on social media, but also bring Nava into it without ever talking to me, that's not the friend or colleague that I know. Those are pretty powerful words, and they touch me deeply, Karen. I don't want anyone to feel terrible or sad, and I don't like calling people I like out in public. And every time I do that, lots of people think I'm a big jerk and tell me, Paul, I thought you were better than that, and that's not good for my brand either. But I don't speak out to be liked or admired. I don't speak out to hurt people's feelings. I speak out strongly in order to be heard, because if you whisper, no one's going to pay any attention to what you say. Coming back from Voice Over Atlanta, it's easy to think that we're all united and friends for life, but the truth is that we can be friends and disagree. Some of my best colleagues are on Voices.com, and we are still on speaking terms. If your goal is to have an organization that represents all voice actors, you'll have to represent all kinds of opinions. I know what that is like, because when I lived and worked in the Netherlands, I represented thousands of freelance journalists in the trade union I belonged to, and it was impossible to please every single member. The reason I called Karen out personally was because of what she said about Fiverr during the panel at Voice Over Atlanta. She had been introduced as the VP of NAVA, and at no point during our discussion on the podium did she say, this is my personal opinion, this is NAVA's opinion. It's all the same. Back in the Netherlands, I trained many CEOs of big corporations on how to deal with the press. And the one point I stressed over and over again is that as CEO, people will always see you as speaking for your company. It doesn't matter if you think you don't. Perception is everything. Should I have talked to Karen before I posted the video? Well, fact is that we did talk as panelists, and I was very clear about Fiverr. I even used the word shining shit on stage. So as far as I was concerned, what we needed to say had been said. But making this about a disagreement between me and Karen is a deflection and a distraction from the topic of Fiverr. Now, there are a couple of things I learned from the podcast that filled in some blanks for me, things you need to know. Karen said, quote, I do not advocate for Fiverr. I don't think Fiverr is a good site at all. I don't like the idea of earning $5 for a job that should pay more. I don't think that one person's success is an indication that the site is not problematic in many ways. The site is problematic in many ways, end quote. I just wish you had used those words on the panel and would have added, by the way, this is my personal opinion, not the opinion of Nava. Her point was that everyone calling him or herself a voice actor is welcome to join Nava. And Jamie Muffet added, because you're not choosing to discriminate, that doesn't mean you're choosing to be in support of Fiverr. Karen then said, I'm not on Fiverr myself, but if I did, I would tell you about it. I don't support Fiverr, but I would never tell a person who's on Fiverr that that is the wrong way to be a voice actor, because there are so many ways to be a voice actor. I would educate them about the rates that they could be getting, industry standard rates. I would educate them about the union rates that they could be getting if they became union and everything else in between. But I would never tell someone that the way they do something is wrong. I don't have that authority, end quote. Then Jamie Muffet asked, are the people that charge less than industry standard rates harming the industry? Are they harming your career or mine? And Karen said, quote, I don't think so. I think there's room for the dollar store. There's room for Target and for Tiffany's, unquote. Look, it's a given that some people have a budget to buy a Kia and others have money to buy a BMW. But voiceovers don't sell cars, they sell services. Pricing services is not as easy as pricing tangible products. It's more subjective because you have to factor in your costs, your education, your experience, your time. You also have to look at what your competitors are charging for similar services in your market and see how consumers are responding to these prices. 
I know a piano teacher who had studied at a reputable conservatory and she charged accordingly. All of a sudden, she started losing students. It turned out that an amateur pianist was offering lessons at half the rate because she said she didn't have to make a living teaching. Her husband had a full-time job with generous benefits. But what would happen if her husband got laid off? Could they get by on those low rates she was charging? No. I learned from the CEO of Voice123 that 80% of his customers, the people looking for a voice, have no idea how much to pay for a voiceover and why they pay what they're paying. So why would they spend 250 bucks to get a voiceover they could get for 25 bucks on Fiverr? As Karen said, even VOs turn to Fiverr to have someone design a cheap logo. Listen, I no longer blame ignorant clients for the decline in rates. They want to pay less so they can make more. I do blame undercutting voiceovers for accepting these low rates. And yes, I do believe rates have gone down since I started recording voiceovers in the USA some 20 years ago. If anything, they haven't gone up while the cost of living keeps on rising. So in effect, we are making less and NAVA should be worried about that. Now, an argument in favour of Fiverr that Jamie and Karen made had to do with gaining experience in the business. Jamie said, you've got to start somewhere. Maybe it's Fiverr, maybe it's Upwork. People have been working for cheap early in their career for time immemorial. Yes, you need, to be, you need time to become good at what you do, and the stakes aren't as high on a low-budget platform. But here's what I think. No matter how much or how little a client pays, you're being paid because you're supposed to know the job. You're not getting paid to learn on the job. If you're a plumber, electrician or a surgeon, that would not be tolerated. So why is doing voiceover so different? I don't doubt that people can do great things in a bad system. Alice Averdeen is doing well on Fiverr. Some people are doing very well on Voices.com, but that doesn't mean the platform is great. J. Michael Collins made millions on VDC, Voices.com, and yet he left because of what he saw as unethical business practices. And as far as I can tell, he's still doing very well without them. He drew a line in the sand, and as far as I can tell, Fiverr is as low as one can go, and that is where I draw mine. I really respect Karin and Tim Friedlander, the NAVA president, for all they have done and are doing to make sure our voices are heard. But I wish NAVA would add a P to their name, the National Association of Professional Voice Actors, because... Contrary to what many people believe, we are not a group of hobbyists talking into USB microphones. Many of us invest thousands of dollars in equipment and recording space, in branding, marketing, training, client acquisition. We have years of experience. We have standards. We are worth more than most jobs on Fiverr will ever pay. Have a good day. I'll see you soon. Bye.